I just posted my video last night. I was done at like 3.30, so it's now 11. I slept in. Kevin is at Mija Soul prepping, and today is my day off to stock the fridge, do a little cooking, and a little bit of cleaning. It's like a reward. trying to hype myself to go grocery shopping i'm hungry and i don't want to cook food so i'm gonna go This is gonna really keep me fed for an entire week. I do have a lot of plans to eat out this week. Um, a lot of like family things, it's my mom's birthday also. So I didn't buy too much. I think what I'm most looking forward to cooking is the salted pollock roe. It's probably something that you have never seen before, but it's actually so versatile. I know these look kind of freaky because it looks like something that we are all thinking about what it looks like. So yeah, I'm excited to show you what we can do with Myeongnam.
This was so not worth it. Anything that's good is wrapped, and you know what I mean. <sighs> Perfect wintertime food. And the pouch kind of looks like a old school wallet, so it's supposed to give you good fortune. Mmm! <sighs> Let's make some dumplings together. Dumpling! Pork and cabbage. I'm gonna put this in the fridge overnight and fry them up tomorrow. Good night. It's also actually 4 a.m. Don't be worried. I'm just a little jet lagged and I was feeling a little antsy. I may have some issues. Actually, the sugar, I was kind of like, that's a bit nasty, but it works well. Like, it kind of reminds you of like Japanese, like sweet omelet, a little bit. And it smells like one to one like a McDonald's burger. Mmm, juicy. It's like zero calories. I always consider this like salad. <laughs> exactly, it's just warm. Mm -hmm.
A baby. Let's see, what is that? Message from your parents at home. Ah, oh, yeah? Is it from my parents' place? It's the green plug from your parents' place, yeah. Fourth of June. For any type of like sweetener for Korean food, we always use meshin because it has kind of this almost like citrusy fragrance scent. Every family has like a whole jar that they make once a year and that's all the sugar you're gonna get, honey. Shall we? What day is it today? Push day. I have to wait for Dubu to bop. <laughs> no, today's date day. I sold myself and my soul to Dubi. like handsome Squidward. Kevin is my passenger princess. Yeah. American franchises. Really people. She showed arms. Little stick to get it colony. So this is kind of like the Times Square of Seoul. It's like super touristed and has like a bunch of street stalls and it's fun and there's like a bunch of just like shops in general. Oh there it is. Yongdong Gyoza. It's like super popular with Japanese tourists for some reason. But the queue goes pretty fast though, like 20 minutes, the lady said. So we'll time it if she's lying or not. Let's see. What did you say? Eating. Ah, yes, thank you. That was like five minutes of waiting actually. It's so garlicky, my eyes are watering. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually quite excited. I crave it once in a while. It's like so garlicky. Everything is garlicky here. Like the noodles, like the kimchi, everything is super garlicky. But I think it's the reason why it's so popular. <laughs> wow. I just ordered water for the first time. You're gonna be what? The face of Duolingo. A little birdie. Kevin's been really proud of the fact that people have been adding him on Duolingo ever since I posted the last vlog. Mm -hmm. I'll put his username right here for Duolingo. We got more Pressure's on. Than Facebook now. <laughs> this is kind of like our version of wonton soup. Like inside is um like ground meat, onions, knife noodles. We call it knife noodles because we like cut it with a knife and little mandus that are in the form of wonton-esque shape. I'm gonna have a wonton first. Mm. Oh, the kimchi is too garlicky for my taste though. It's super garlicky, just FYI. I love it. <laughs> you like it? Mm -hmm. It gives me heartburn yeah, at, at night. <laughs> I can't sleep after the kimchi here. I think Korea cuisine is one of my, like, probably the ideal cuisine for me. Oh, these really look like silicon molds. You know, I wanted to boot job my freshman year of college. <laughs> uh, I had a really close friend named mm -hmm. She had, like, massive tips. Natural born killers. <laughs> I saw the type of treatment she would get at bars and I was like, I want that. It was garlicky, but it was good. And it hits in the right moments. The end. So this is the $8 marshmallow brownie that Kevin wanted. That Tina's now eating.
Remember the How Koreans Kimchi video? Well, the kimchi is finally ripe and ready. Let me show you what it looks like. I've been letting this ferment in the fridge for about a month. Cold ferment, so it really brings out that subtle flavors. Funky. Mmm. Mmm. It's acidic. It's pungent. It's spicy. No fishiness at all. Ooh, it's sour, but it's so good. And the best way to have freshly fermented kimchi is to make kimchi jjim with pork. Because we're in Korea. So I'm gonna make kimchi jjim today. And I'm just gonna cover it up to prevent oxygen. And kimchi jjim is honestly so easy to make. You only need kimchi and pork. And I'm gonna be reusing this tomorrow too, so you'll see. Pork is going on skin side, down. And all this lard, we're gonna reserve. We're gonna use this tomorrow. I got the pot to match the kimchi. And now comes the fun part. Very simple. It's all about layering. One layer of kimchi, two pieces of pork, like so. A bit of the leftovers here on the side. And the key is to make sure that the pork is covered top and bottom with kimchi. The kimchi flavoring really seeps in as we're doing the braise. Around a half cup of kimchi juice and the filling, water, just to make sure that the bottom isn't burning. Leeks, a heaping tablespoon of minced garlic, and some black pepper. And this is all you need. Super simple, and we're gonna stew it for around two hours. Medium low heat. It's been one hour, and I'm gonna open it to show you. Wow, gorgeous. And the meat should be fully cooked by now and super tender. I'm gonna poke a chopstick through it to show you. A bit of bite to it, but still very soft. Look at that. If you like a little bit of bite to it, I would say to take it out now. And uh, I'm pretty hungry, so I'm gonna take it out now. And then the rest, I'm gonna let it simmer for an additional hour, and that one I'm gonna save for tomorrow. Kimchi jjim is definitely one of my favorite meals and I just batch make a bunch and I use it for so many different purposes too. I like to wrap a bit of kimchi around the pork. Wow. I love kimchi jjim so much. Ah, I mean the kimchi really carries the the dish. Good kimchi, good kimchi dishes, obviously, with a little bit of help from lard. You make your little pseudo book. What does this say? K bean. K bean. 
저는 기분입니다. 저는 기분입니다. Let's say we start again. Okay. Kevin. Good. It's the start, no? This is war and this is il. This is month and this is day. I'm a little bit scared now. Wrong. Ah, ya, o, yo, u, yo, u, yu, u, i. Read it. You. No. You. 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 Ah. So there's the Chinese way, the Korean way, and then the before unit ones, right? Mm -hmm. The before unit ones, it kind of only changes from one to four. Han, du, se, ne. Right? Don yan. I'm sorry. You did good today. Come on, Mida. Ne. And you should make flashcards of all of these today before you go to sleep as a repetition. We ran out of rice, so I'm just quickly going to the convenience store to get some microwave bowl rice and maybe a little snackies. So cold in Korea right now. It's like negative 10. <gasps> the things I do for rice. Rice, 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 rice. I'm gonna make some kimchi fried rice with the kimchi jim that's left over from yesterday. This outside and I think it's completely frozen. Yeah, it's frozen. Geez, so cold. Ah. I'm gonna make kimchi rice balls stuffed with cheese. You want a little bit of tuna for some protein? Yeah. Okay. Ah, it's so packed. I'm just letting some of the steam evaporate or else if there's too much moisture, it won't stick to each other. I'm gonna add a little bit of oyster sauce in it. Whoever made the bottle design for this deserves to go to jail. Mm. Kimchi, cheese, chop up. Tilt. Crispy. Come, It is so freaking cold in Korea. We had a super successful day with Kevin getting his residence card from the Seoul Immigration Office. It was fairly easy. We just had all the paperwork ready, so it was just... 
we were kind of like looking for like a warm dessert, a lava cake or like a warm apple pie. There's like really not that many places in Korea that sells warm desserts. So we got these and we're gonna make a chocolate banana pancakes and watch Boy in the Heron. This is the ultimate date night for us. I think I want banana foster style. It's like the New Orleans style. Chocolate chip? Chocolate chip. Chocolate chip. Chocolate chip. Have you ever watched Pokemon? Like or Dragon Ball or... Why? I'm just curious if there's something we could watch on like... Ideas. What, what? My ideas. Ideas. Irritable bear bowel syndrome. Pancakes are a bit salty, but it actually works well with the Sweet. banana foster like dark caramel note. God's plan. With a little bit of maple syrup, huh? <sighs> I was really unsure about the amount of baking soda, but it worked out. This is really fucking good. Mm. And the key to the type of bananas you need to use for this, they need to be unripe. It's actually better because it kind of adds a little bit of that acidity. If it's mushy banana, you would have like banana vomit. No. <laughs> Perfect date night. Boy in the heron. Yeah, let's go watch some anime. Did myself on this one. Recipe available on dbdebop.com slash recipes. So slippery. <laughs> <laughs> Who was that? It's so slippery. Yeah.
When it's raining in Korea, you need to have chun because the sound of the rain is very similar to the sound of the oil splattering when something is being pan fried. So that's exactly what we're gonna go get. Chun. <laughs> I feel like chun is one of those things that the West hasn't like caught on to just yet. It's not like super crispy because it's like pan fried, but it's seriously so good. It's like an egg omelette, like the sweetness coming from the caramelized green onion. Superb, superb. It's my mom's favorite also. Mm. Good morning! For breakfast slash lunch, I'm gonna make quick fried rice with some of the leftover jajang sauce and yeah! So weird for me to edit version of me making the food I ate a couple of hours ago. I guess this is what it feels like to be ahead. I still have a lot to go with the final flares. I've only finished the rough cutting part. And on days like this, where there's a lot of work, it means one thing and one thing only. Girl dinner! And especially salty food because I want to get more pimples. Welcome to Kina's Izakaya. Today on the menu, we have lots of dishes as well as 
Salty Fat Fingers. Oh, or 20% off, which is what makes it even more delicious. I like Pollock Row medium rare rare because it kind of has like the charred flavor but it also has like the sweetness and the textures of all the eggs kind of just bursting and I didn't salt anything on the cabbage because the eggs are really really salty so the crunchiness of the cabbage and the sweetness from the charred like buttery parts with the Pollock Row is really really good And if you want this to be slightly more pink, you can add a bit of chili oil. It tastes like caviar. That's exactly what it tastes like. But even a little bit more refreshing and a little bit spicier. The reason I work is to eat. This is the Michelin Bib Gourmand raw marinated crab place that I've been wanting to come for so long. We reserved two weeks in advance. It was pretty easy. You can just do it online, right? Online? Oh no, that's cold. <laughs> So the real utensil you'll be using today One gifted by God And this is all the roe Which means that these are female crabs And they're a lot more delicious and fatty Okay, enough talking, let's start eating. And my dad is here today also, which is a rare occurrence. Remember the kimchi jim I made a couple days ago? Let me show you what it looks like. 
and it's even softer. Look at that, it's like falling apart. I'm gonna make tortillas with it, and there's nothing better than a homemade tortilla for me. And I have the lard that I got from searing the pork, and I'm gonna use this as the fat in our tortilla. Salt, baking powder. You want to make sure all the flour is well coated in the lard because this helps prevent gluten formation. It should kind of have a consistency like wet sand. Look. I have a mezcal bottle. And this was only just the recipe testing process. I'm just gonna do it from scratch when I film a short version of it because I really wanted to make sure that the recipe for this was foolproof. Dip it in here, get some of that cilantro and crunchy onion in. Yeah. One of my favorite things to eat late night in New York is the birria taco stand. And whenever I put the lime on top of the consomme, the little soup that you dip the birria tacos in, it always reminded me of kimchi jjigae for some reason. I think that Mexican food and Korean food have a lot of similarities. So I've been thinking for a while to be like, oh, it'd be really cool to substitute the birria for Korean pork kimchi jjigae. The reason why I don't put lime in this is because the acid from the kimchi, by cold fermenting it, it really shines through and you don't need that acidity. It has that natural acidity, as well as some of the sweetness and the spiciness coming from the cabbage as well. Ah, it's a great way to end my what I eat in a week series too. So I'm really, really happy. One more time. I'll see you next week. Bye bye, good bees. Love you.